Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In this video, let's learn about a simple Docker utility, but a very, very powerful one. Docker in it. Lot of times DevOps engineers ask me this question. Abhishek, how to write Docker files when we are not confident about the application build process and we are not sure what commands to run to build the application and execute the application. Previously, my answer was to sit with the developers, try to understand how to build the application. What are the commands that are required? What dependencies you need to download to build the application? Get the information on the command to run the application. But now my answer is to use Docker in it. Let's see how Docker in it works and what all it can do for us. So I have a very simple application for this demo. It's in my Python for DevOps repository. This repository helps you learn Python right from basics. If you are a DevOps engineer, all the DevOps related use cases. I'll put the link in the description. But today we will focus on this particular folder, simple Python app. It's a very simple application where there is a app.py. This is a Flask Python application. And when this Python file is run, it returns hello world and it runs on port 8000. There is a requirements.txt file with requirements such as Flask and other dependencies that are required to run this application. First, let's clone this repository. Right, let's see the magic of Docker in it where right now this repository, let me get my terminal. So I will clone this repo. And let's switch to the directory Python for DevOps, simple Python app. There is only Python file and the dependency file. There is no Docker file. There is no Docker compose file. Docker in it is going to create all that for us. Before that, let's see if this application is actually working or not, because before we containerize it, we want to make sure that the application dependencies, everything are perfect. So I'll simply do Python three app.py. I have Python installed on my machine. You also need to have it and you also need to run pip3 install minus r requirements.txt. Now let's try Python 3 app.py. Okay, it says that application is running. Try to access it on port 8000. Let's try local host colon 8000. Perfect. If I refresh, hello world. So the application is running. Now let's proceed with containerizing it where assume I don't know how to containerize a Python application. I don't know what steps are required, how to write the Docker file, what is the base image, what port to expose, how to expose. Solution is just run Docker in it. You can also use this for your learning purpose, not just only for creating the Docker compose file or Docker file using it in your actual environment, but still you can also use it in your home environment where you are learning Docker, where you are learning uh, Docker Compose. Okay, so it says this utility will walk you through creating the following files. Docker file, Docker Compose file, a readme file which explains how to access the container once it is running. Okay. Let's select the programming language. Docker in it supports all these programming languages that you see here. By default, it is Python. It says it detected Python. It is asking to confirm. Okay, it's Python. Let me confirm. Python version, let me go with 3.10.0. Port 8000. Yes, it is fine. What is the command that you used to run this application? Here, let me give us python3 app.py. 
that's it see the magic in fraction of seconds it created dot docker ignore file docker file compose file and a readme file this readme file will simply tell us uh, how to access the container that's okay now because all of these things are created let me try to use the docker compose file let me just run docker compose up hyphen hyphen build let's see if the docker compose file that it has created is working or not oh before that let me show me let me show you the compose file so everything else is commented basically there is only one service that is running server build context which means that docker file is available in the same directory and it is mapping the port of your host with a container port that's all in the docker compose file rest all is commented there is no db that we are using so going back docker compose up minus minus build hyphen hyphen build So the Docker compose is running and once it is done, I expect perfect. Now it is working. Now the port mapping is also done. 8000 port on your host is mapped with the port within the container. So let's try to access the URL that it provided. Hello world. So we got the output here. We did not write the Docker file. We did not write the Docker compose file. Everything is written by Docker in it. Let's also see how good is the Docker file that Docker in it wrote for us. I'm quite surprised when I actually started using Docker in it because it took care of all the security best practices. If you watch carefully, it is using a user like it created a user for us so that the container runs as non root and it also took care of disabling the password for that particular user along with that it is also considering the size of the docker image it has you know mounted see this particular line here where download dependencies as a separate step to take advantage of docker's caching so it is also considering the docker caching it is considering the size of your docker image it is making sure that it follows the security best practices when i executed docker in it against one of my go repository i also noticed that it is creating the docker image sorry the docker file with multi stage docker build concept here the application is a very simple one there are not many dependencies while building the application so it just used one single stage and in the beginning it choose the docker slim image but when you go for a complicated project i have also noticed that it is using multi stage docker with the distroless image concept so it's a quite interesting utility of course when i used it against a super complicated project that i have which i am using in xyz place i noticed there are some changes that i had to make but it is okay because it is doing a lot of heavy lifting for me in simple applications it is working as expected in complicated cases i had to make little tweaks but overall i have the docker file created i have the compose file created so if i am a devops engineer and if i have to containerize the projects docker in it would be my go to solution then probably i might sit with my developer trying to understand if everything uh, is perfect all the dependencies are as expected you know i would ask my developers to just test this uh, container on a, a local environment or a developer environment but otherwise this utility is quite interesting it is available in the docker desktop 4.18 and above versions so you need to have docker desktop on your machine and you need to have it with 4.18 or above versions i also see docker focusing a lot on it there is active development that is going on so this is something that you all should watch out for
i hope you like this video thank you so much for watching it see you all in the next one take care